just when you thought it was impossible to cram more features into a motherboard, Asus brought out the Rampage 4 Extreme. So this particular one comes with a full copy of Battlefield 3. It is PCIe Gen 3 ready, which comes along with the territory because this is an Intel LGA 2011 socket motherboard with the X79 chipset supporting Core i7 I Extreme and Core i7 processors on this socket. That is six core processors only so far, although there should be four core processors and even more core processors coming in the future. Four-way SLI and Crossfire support and a wide, wide range of other features. So let's get started here. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's open up the board first. I'm going to like shake things up a little bit here and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get the board open. I'm going to get the board out of the box, which you can see through the box fairly well anyway. So it's not, not a huge issue one way or the other, but uh, we will talk about features as we show them on the camera. There we go. All right, so the motherboard, let's do the accessories, then we'll do the board itself and the features when we are done with the accessories. So accessories, I'm gonna have to cover some of the features here as well, so check this out, you guys. This is the LGA 2011 backplate. Oh, so why does it have an LGA 2011 backplate in the box, you might ask? Well, that is actually because of a feature called X-Socket, which allows you to install either an LGA 2011 native cooler or Actually, if we just open up uh, recently closed tabs here, X socket, there we go. Or if you check out these, uh, if you check out the event.asus.com slash 2011 slash ROG slash X dash socket website, you can actually see third party coolers that support their X socket uh, technology, which allows you to install your 1366 cooler on LGA 2011 boards that include X socket technology, which as far as I know is just this one. Okay, what else we got here in terms of accessories? Gamer UI, gamer style, the choice of champions. So here's a little ROG. Ooh, look at that. It's all shiny and like silvery. You put that somewhere nice. Okay. We got the Battlefield 3 game, which you guys can't see the code for. We have a three-way SLI bridge, a four-way SLI bridge, a two-way SLI bridge, nice flexible black cable, perfect. And finally, a crossfire bridge, once again, black, perfect. Okay, we've got their, what are they calling this now? Pro belt. Okay, so that allows you to quickly check your voltages on a variety of things, which we'll see when we open up the board. We've got our IO shield. We've got ROG Connect, which allows you to overclock your CPU and change settings using the USB connection and an additional computer. We have the Oxnar or Zonar sound card. So apparently this board includes Zonar technology. Fascinating. Either that or this is just... Oh, no, this seems to be just like an ad for it. Oh, interesting. Next, we have a lanyard. Cool. It's a Battlefield, uh, Battlefield 3 lanyard. This is cool. We'll get to this after. ROG Connect cable. Uh, USB cable of some sort. Oh, this is for the OC key, which is also part of that. So we'll get to that later. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four USB, or SATA 3, six gigabit per second cables. Those are all right angle. And then we have one, two, three, four SATA, th four, uh, SATA 2, three gigabit per second cables. And those are all right angle as well. Finally, Q connectors, which allow you to do your front panel and at least one front USB connector with additional ease. And now let's just go ahead and throw these back in here and then let's whip out the board itself because the board is what you folks all paid good money to see. And by paid good money, I mean didn't pay anything at all. Here we go. So this is not quite a standard ATX board. We've seen Asus doing this with their Republic of Gamers level boards for quite some time where they're widening the board just a smidgen in order to cram on more features. So you can see here is where we would normally have the board ending and Asus has put about another couple centimeters of PCB where they've put a lot of useful things. Why don't we start with the CPU socket. So there's our LGA 2011 socket that is a supporting Core i7 and Core i7 Extreme processors and where is the, uh, you know what? I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you guys. See, here's the back plate that's on here now. I actually don't understand exactly how XSocket is going to work based on what I've seen so far, but the theory is that it does work and that's good. Okay, 
as long as the cooler supports it. So that's that's the key part. Around the sides of the socket, we have our eight dim slots. So yes, Asus has managed, even on their top tier performance board, to provide eight dim slots. If you are installing only four dims, I would definitely recommend you use the red slots because those ones are slightly further away from the CPU socket, giving you a little bit more room for bulky coolers and a little bit of additional airflow around your socket. Speaking of coolers, we've got our VRM coolers here and here. Asus has integrated their new generation of DigiPlus VRM on this particular board, which means that you have uh, dedicated digital voltage regulators, not only for the CPU, but also for the memory, which just means additional components that they had to build into this board. You can actually, you can, I mean, you can clearly see how dense the PCB is. Every square inch of it is covered with something. CPU power connectors. We have one 8-pin and one 4-pin connector. You do not have to use both of them, although I would recommend if you're going to do any serious overclocking on this board, which I hope you're doing if you're buying this board, that you probably connect both of them. Moving down this side of the board, we have an LED post readout. We have slow mode. I would probably leave that off for the most part. LN2 mode, which is the jumper right here. Uh, CPU frequency. Ah, okay, where's that one lead? Can't even see where some of these lead. Fascinating. Okay, well here's all the voltage checkpoints. So you can check uh, DRAM, CD, DRAM AB, PCH 1.5, PCH 1.1, VTT, VSA, VCore, and you've got two grounds available. We have onboard start and reset switches. We also have the ability to turn on or off. I believe these are all of the PCI Express uh, here, the red PCI Express slots, although I will double check that for you guys. We have the traditional go button right here. We've got our 24 pin connector in its ideal location along the right hand edge. Front USB 3 in what I would consider to be its ideal location along the right hand edge. Sub zero sense, this is fascinating. So, sub zero sense right here allows you to detect the board temperatures even when you are well below zero. So, no matter how cold you are in theory, this will tell you the temperatures that you need to know. We have four SATA th to three gigabit per second and four SATA three six gigabit per second ports. So two of those are running off the Intel chipset, or rather four, all four of those are running off the Intel chipset. So that is ideal. We also have an active cooler on the chipset here, which is connected by heat pipe to another active cooler and or, or passive uh, heat sink and the other passive heat sink. And finally, the other passive heat sink that I showed you guys already. So it's like a chain of heat pipes leading all the way down here. All right, keeping on moving. This button switches which BIOS you're using. So this is a multi BIOS board. If you do happen to corrupt your BIOS, you can switch to the other one. There's your front panel connectors, another front USB three and uh, one, two USB two front panel headers. Finally, moving over here, there's your two BIOS chips. There are, is your front panel uh, audio and how many four pin PWM connectors do we have on this board? We have one here. Uh, just zoom out far so that they can kind of see where they are. There's one here, one here, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four pin PWM connectors. That's, that's outstanding. Awesome. Love to see it. More of those is always better in my mind. So here, let's have a look at the PCI Express slot layout. So it is ideally laid out for four-way uh, SLI or four-way crossfire in an ATX or se well, semi-ATX form factor. Remember, XL ATX boards are about this much longer, but ASUS wants you to be actually be able to install this board in any number of different cases. So what you will need to do four-way SLI or crossfires, you will need a case like the 800D from Corsair that has uh, maybe seven expansion slots, but at least like uh, some extra space at the bottom so that the bottom card can hang over a little bit. So you can install, if you're running two-way SLI or Crossfire, you will be able to install those two cards plus an additional one, two, three PCIe 16X slots, of which uh, they are all wired at 8X. Remember, uh, X79 is 16X, 16X, or it is 16X, 8X, 8X, or it is 8x, 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 8x in the way that the PCI Express slots are going to be split up. Here we have a couple of auxiliary power connectors. Here's a 6-pin as well as a 4-pin floppy auxiliary power connector. And let's move around to the back panel of the board before we start to go over some of the features that I haven't necessarily quite covered yet. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
six seven USB 2.0 ports, a PS2 keyboard mouse combo port, clear CMOS button. There's also another one here if for whatever reason the back panel is not convenient enough for you. We also have an ROG connect button. So that's this port right here. You use that to do overclocking on another computer connected to this one. There is Bluetooth and which also allows you to do overclocking, but that's via your iPad or iPhone or I guess iPod touch would probably also support it. So you can use the app to do that. We've got an eSATA port here, another eSATA port there. Giga Gigabit Ethernet, four USB 3.0, 7.1 audio out, including optical audio out. So let's see if there's any features here that I have sort of missed. There are some LEDs built into this board that are going to remind you about your voltages, or just, I guess, warn you about your voltages, more like it. And right, this one, haha, <laughs> OC key. So OC key is actually just a straight DVI pass through. So you see this and this. And then you have to connect it via USB, whether you do it this way or with the internal style connector. So you can see this right here. Okay. And what OC key does is it overlays your BIOS settings on top of the image that your uh, video card is already outputting. So what that means is you can actually see, rather than just relying on this guy right here, the little post post readout, you can actually see status updates about your PC. You can change settings without even interfering with whatever you're doing on the screen behind the overlay. So it's kind of like if you have a home theater and you have a receiver that has an overlay to change whatever settings uh, that at the hardware level, but it doesn't actually affect the media that's playing back in the background. And then you can just, you know, shut it off at will. So that is the OC key. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, let me see if there's anything that I've kind of missed. So this is hardware driven, so you can tweak your system on the fly. And the OSD monitor, right? Okay, I already talked to you guys. So this allows you to monitor whatever information you want as well. Talked about Digi Plus 2, which means that you've got, okay, hold on, let's see if I missed anything. So Japan made 10K black metallic capacitors. These are rated for 105 degrees. And Asus figures they'll last up to five times longer than regular solid caps. These guys down here with all the cooling all over them. Ah, VGA Hotwire. Oh, I can't believe I missed this one right here. So VGA Hotwire is these headers right here. This allows you to actually overvolt your <laughs> overvolt your GPUs through the ASUS utility rather than connecting variable resistors to the back of the board and adjusting the little dials. So you solder, you have to do all the same solder points. You still have to do the work. It doesn't support just like overvolting your GPU through the PCI Express slot or anything like that. But what it does allow you to do is it allows you to adjust those settings using the motherboard. So that is very, very cool. Uh, what else do we have here for way okay. And I think that pretty much covers it. Nope, there's one more thing. So USB BIOS flashback without even a CPU or RAM installed in the system. You throw a USB key in there. You rename the file to the correct name. You check the manual to make sure you've got it all set up right. And you can actually flash the BIOS in the worst case scenario, which is everything went as wrong as it can go. And you can completely restore it to a new BIOS. Couple more cool features, sorry battery died, is you can actually uh, see the status of any cards that are installed in the PCI Express slots in the BIOS. This isn't a new feature on this board, but it is one that I have seen on previous ASUS boards like the Crosshair 5 that is very useful for diagnosing video card problems, especially if you have water cooling blocks on there. And I think that pretty much covers it. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the Rampage 4 Extreme. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.